scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I will give you very quickly four reasons why so many people are poor. Are you ready? Number one, they have not decided to be wealthy. Underline the word decided. Many people are poor because they have not decided to be wealthy. They wish to be wealthy. They hate poverty. They talk about prosperity, but they have not decided to be wealthy. The difference between a wish and a decision is that a decision is a determination to reach an end with the awareness of the consequences that it will take. Are we together? One day ago, Beta is just a sociological way saying, a decision is a determination backed up by the willingness to pay the price. Until that willingness is there, it's not a decision. Many people have not decided. They have decided to hate poverty. They have decided to talk about their problems. But they have not decided to be wealthy. Number two, why are so many people poor? They do not have a goal to be wealthy. A clearly defined desire a clearly defined expectation pastor things are not working in my life what do you want I don't know I just know that things are not working you are not going to get it that way imagine a man entering a car and he just kicks it and starts running where are you going to say just keep watching have you climbed a bike going somewhere and then the bike man claimed that he knew where he was going Oh, do you know this player? Ah, I know it. And then later on, you find out that he's been going around an area for a long time. Say, I thought you said you know it. Say, well, uh, the last time, I don't know if he's that. I think we missed somewhere. Yet the guy claimed he knew where he was going. It's amazing that for 99% of your journey, you never see your destination. Yet if you are sure of it, you will get there. There is no goal. For many of us, we have not set it as a goal. To be wealthy number three why are so many people poor they lack the understanding of the real formula for wealth and abundance oh there is a there is a real formula there is a science to wealth and abundance and many believers many well-intentioned well-meaning church people do not really know the formula. We just know pieces of information that relate to wealth, but they've not been sequentially and methodically arranged to produce prosperity. The formula for wealth and abundance. And then number four, why are so many people poor? Lack of the mental transition from the realm of poverty to the realm of wealth. The inability to contend for transition. The mental transition it will take to move from the realm of poverty to the realm of abundance. Is God helping us already? Now, I'm, I'm working on our mindsets now. There are five myths that surround the issue of prosperity and abundance. There are five mindsets, five major mindsets, Pastor, that I have found out that most people who don't succeed, they have those mindsets. Dangerous belief systems. Can we walk through them? 
five very quickly number one the first belief system is that money and abundance is carnal is evil or is unnecessary and they get that scripture from first timothy chapter 6 and verse 10 money and abundance is carnal is evil and is unnecessary so in a bid to be holy or in a bid to love the lord they feel that i have to reject wealth and abundance and this is the scripture for the love of money is the root of all evil the bible never said money is the root of all evil it says for the love of money the word there is eros one of the translations of the word love eros eros means an ungodly affinity an attachment that is at the detriment of your relationship with god it says when you have that kind of affinity towards money it becomes the foundation for all kinds of evils are we together now materialism is not having materials materialism is the influence of materials over your relationship with god there are poor people who are materialistic money and abundance is carnal if i ask all of you to shout the word rich you will be surprised how embarrassed you will be mentioning that word you are a christian or you are born again you've been praying in tongues for a long time i just say shout the word rich you will feel guilty almost to ask for forgiveness there is something there is a programming that has happened to us we associate wealth with a very very negative disposition number two very quickly what's the second myth that keeps people poor if god really wants me rich he will make me rich so we leave the responsibility to god and we get our backing from psalms 84 and verse 11. please pay attention if god really wants me rich he will make me rich so if i'm not rich it must be that god wants me this way and here's the scripture the bible says for the lord god is a son and a shield he will give grace and glory no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly so we use it as a justification it is within his power to make great riches and wealth and honor in his hands so if god wants me to prosper i'm sure he would prosper me it was bishop Oyedeko who said every christianity that makes god entirely responsible for the outcome of your life is an irresponsible christianity there will always be a participatory role that you have to play in actualizing any divine promise in your life are we together myth number three that tithing is the one and only key to abundance it looks like a very sincere understanding but it's a dangerous one there are many people who believe that the only key to wealth and abundance is tithing tithing is the one and only key to abundance they say because of malachi chapter 3 and verse 10 that is a very destructive myth tithing is a foundational key like we've considered but in truth it is not the only key it is one of the many keys are we together very quickly number four and pay attention to this one because many many people africans nigerians are victims of this mindset here it is if all i have is a business idea and startup capital i will be rich oh dear i repeat if all i have is just an idea and capital i will be rich it's not exactly so business idea plus capital is not equal to abundance there are many other variables in that equation are we together yes i remember someone who met her uncle years ago harassing the man and trying to point to the man that he's been so insensitive to the needs of the family and the man said i know if i give you people money you're not going to do anything and he said uncle give us xyz amount and will never disturb you for the rest of your life and the man the man just laughed and he gave them something small he said if you can come back after two or was it two or three months and prove to me that you've used it well i will give you more guess what happened they never came back because chances are if they give you capital your mindset will not allow you to rest 
you will first touch it then you will borrow from it promising to return back then you'll get into trouble then you'll pass a restaurant and there's no self-control and you say what is there i can't be holding money like this and kill myself even god knows that you see that these are all the traits by the time you get home the money has divided into half then you will emotionally get up after listening to a message and carry the remaining and say you are sowing it and as good as that looks at the end of it you will go back and you will feel you will feel evil for what you have done mindsets didn't work that means there is more to the equation let's discuss the last one the last one is called entitlement mentality oh dear nigerians entitlement mentality what is that the feeling that someone somewhere is responsible for your success the feeling that someone somewhere could be an uncle could be a friend could be your pastor could be your family members could be your relatives that somebody somewhere owes you success there are people who move around getting angry with uncles and aunties in nigeria if you prosper from a family where you are the only one who rises you have to pray for the rest to rise too because if you rise alone everybody will come and blackmail you i'm a stakeholder in that such confidence they harass you they make you feel guilty that's why people don't testify nobody will testify that the money they have been waiting for has arrived because they don't want trouble as soon as people are aware oh dear mindsets 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 let me show you something genesis 11 genesis 11 we're going to read the first four or five verses it was a revelation god gave me that changed my life pastor and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech please look up verse 2 and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east they found a plain in the land of china and they dwelt there nimrod kush now and his team verse 3 and they said to one another go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly and they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar keep that scripture there now let me explain to you what happened nimrod kush alongside his team they came from the east to the land of china intending to build a city and a tower they said whose top will reach the heavens and the first thing he began to do was to market that idea they had not started building he started speaking to them ladies and gentlemen we are going to build and the tower will reach the heavens let's see what happens in the realm of the spirit verse 4 it says let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach the heavens and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad from the face of the whole earth verse 5 now the bible says and the lord came down something was happening from earth that attracted there are not many times god came down to the earth remember in this story demons are not mentioned satan is not mentioned just men and their minds the bible says the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men have already finished building they've not started building it yet but just because their minds were receiving that idea in the realm of the spirit god saw a structure already building understand this and he came to see it and he said as far as these people are they have conceived this as a reality the building is finished he had to scatter them physically this they begin to do the next verse says and they have one language and this they begin to do so physically they were about to start the project but in the realm of the spirit, it was finished. This is powerful. Everything is built twice. First in your mind and then physically. If that thing is built in your mind already, there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to stop it from manifesting. Please listen, listen. 
I always counsel people that rather than living a fake life, trying to wear clothes that you are not yet ready for, trying to, you know, fly a business class you're not ready for. No, don't worry. Don't worry about the body. Just let the mind go ahead. Your mind can be an usher. When it gets there, your mind will lead your body to that realm for sure. Are we together now? Yes. Every man you see, while I was watching the, the documentary of one of the men who will be coming to speak to you, your pastor was just telling me a little about him. And could you see the contrasting photos? A young man who was plain looking dirty and tattered is the man now who owns a group of companies around the world. What change? Not his body. You could still identify his face, the mind. Let me tell you, transformation is a real miracle. More than lifting someone from a wheelchair, transformation is a miracle. The miracle of the mind. My life began to change when I found out that when you change in your mind, everything around you changes. Now, I want to demonstrate something. I do it every time I'm teaching about the mind and I'm praying that if all we talk about is the mind, that's, that's still sufficient for this service. Because for many of us, these business ideas, investment, just leave those things. Wealth is not pursued. Wealth primarily is attracted through your growth and transformation. More than what you do, it is who you are that attracts wealth. Listen again. More than what you do, it is who you are that attracts wealth. Life is dimensional. And every level you rise to, there are possibilities already designed by God to come to you. Let me give you an example. How many of you know that if your pastor stands upstage here now and says, I am hungry, what do you think will happen to you? As soon as you hear him say, I am hungry, you will begin to invent what can I cook for my pastor? Because the level God has lifted him should not allow him to say, I am hungry and remain hungry. So now he's getting that blessing through growth. It's not so much what you are doing. The most powerful blessing in your journey to wealth is not the money itself. It's what happens to you on the way. It is greater than the money. Ask any blessed man. Their real satisfaction is not Naira and Kobo. The Naira and Kobo is just the receipt that you arrived well. It is your transformation. Who you become. The newer version of you is more superior than the business. When you talk to wealthy people, when they are talking to you personally, they will not talk about their businesses. They will not talk about all those things. They will talk about their stories. They want to show you their transformation. Now I want to show you something. Many of you have watched videos where I demonstrated it. Let me do it one more time. Is that fine? Please let me have six people. Six well-dressed gentlemen. No, no, no. You sit down. Let the workers. Okay. Just a few people. Just come. Just stand three here and then three here, please. May you never forget this example for the rest of your life. Stand this way, my friend. Just turn. You stand. Just turn. All of you facing me. You turn the same way. Yes. Now watch this. Ah, may someone see this and understand. Space yourselves a bit, guys. Watch this. Life is in levels. Everybody watch this, please. Life is in levels. You hold this. You hold this. Hold it carefully. You hold this. Don't mind my example. I'm, I, I'm insisting that you must understand. Are we together? Now, at every level in your life watch this remember these are the things lift everything you're holding please remember these are the things you want fame cars business pounds dollars they are already a possibility but every time they come to you there is a version of you they are looking for listen carefully it is not every version of you that can attract them so they keep coming and they don't meet you because the you they are looking for has not yet evolved listen carefully 
it looks like right now this is you standing here oh god why would my life change what is there about a car that you will not give me is already in your destiny but the version of you it is looking for you have not evolved yet into it please listen carefully so what happens these are all the things how am i going to get a house how am i going to get money how am i going to get lifting don't worry that's none of your business the god who designed the system is intelligent enough save yourself the stress of thinking of how they will come they are already there everything you are looking for is also looking for you but it's not looking for this version of you please listen you came to church gentlemen please shift back a little here's what i want you to do for me every time i take a step forward come close to me too watch this i'm transforming my mind I know that one day I will meet these things. So as I'm studying books and praying, shake it baradaba. Lord, I will not be a failure. Are you seeing this now? I am growing. What is happening to me? As I am growing, suddenly I begin to have some testimonies in my life. What is suddenly happening in my business? I'm beginning to meet a class of people. My phone contact is changing. It's a report card. I didn't even know when some numbers were deleted from my phone. I didn't delete it intentionally. Very soon, my phone too will change, not just the contact. One day, by what you call coincidence, I will meet with a tailor who will start sewing properly for me. He was always there. My growth. Listen, come. A realm will come when you are in the middle of all this. The wealthy place. At your beck and call, you can pick them. They have now come close to you. Go back again, guys. Let's do it again. Let me show you where you are now. Every Sunday when you come to church, you may not know what is happening. Come. Sunday. Next week. Week after next. While you are praying in your room. While you are studying pastor's materials. This is what is happening. Foolish people will tell you, you are still there in that one room. They do not know. That your evolution is calling things to your life. Listen to me. Now watch this. Go back. Let me show you something. Let me show you what a fake life is. Stand here. A fake life is you have not been transformed to this realm. Yet you want the result of that realm. So you will quickly save money and buy it. And the moment you buy it, your mind will interpret it as an error. Because your mind says you are possessing something that your growth should not have in your life coincidences will make that thing leave you you must return back to your real state this is a law this is the mystery behind this balloon success you see here and there suddenly someone just got five million and the guy is happy and in his mind he believes that his colleagues with all those who grew to that realm you know you have gotten to a realm where everything in your life also grows you cannot be in a business class i'm not insulting you don't feel bad you cannot be in a business class with a wristwatch of 2000 you are not yet there because when you really grow there everything grows also are we together you can't be driving a jeep and then parking to buy one gallon of fuel you are not there no true wealth is a product of being not doing but the people that do know their god so knowledge first then they shall be then they shall do they shall be then they shall do focus on being more than doing this is why any business you do fails it's not always an attack the problem is a mindset if I wear a jean trouser, it's the same me. If I decide to wear Agbada, it's the same me. So no matter what business you switch to, if it's the same mindset running that business, it will still fail. The same way, if your mindset has transited, anything at all can bless you. Someone lay hands on your head and decree and declare, Lord, I agree with you. For my transformation i'm tired of holding on to age-long beliefs that keep me poor that keep me limited now i know that it's not just about doing business 
as important as that is it's about my transformation my growth hallelujah listen many years ago i was in one room one small room when the lord told me i would take you to the nations and i will bless you you will stand before kings one room and yet i agreed with him my body did not need to leave the room my mind since i can't get a visa let my mind go no immigration officer will stop it holy spirit hold that mind and let's go and when your mind goes there your mind returns back to tell your body that place exists let's go your mind is the authorized usher that leads your body are you getting what i'm saying now most of us feel stupid if they call you now and say what are you doing about your finances and you say i'm studying materials and i'm building most people will laugh at you and say sit down there and die don't go and look for something to do it's not always what to do it is your being first you do not get afraid take your pastor now and his wife take him to london take him to us give him six months he will reproduce this result because it did not come by chance it's a product of knowledge and enlightenment when you prosper just by doing you will be afraid of your result because you will suspect it will not last and you are right it won't last but if what you get is by growth everything around you does not make you afraid because even when it disappears you have the power to make it happen again this is why it will be easy for you to give if someone dash you money and they gave you one million if i come as a man of god and i say give me the one million will you agree you will look at me and say, I cast, I respect you, but I, I cast that spirit from you. But if you got it by knowledge and growth, you can give freely because you have the power to replenish. I'm not afraid of any result in my life today. I tell you sincerely, none of it came by luck. It can be reproduced a thousand times regardless of the geography. I'm sorry if I sound arrogant. It is true. If in 24 hours no one favors me, I will go for a retreat. At the level God has brought me now. Because I know 24 hours is too much. God brought you to church to shake you and to challenge you. Not just that you are mesmerized by this truth. Because some of you, you are here, you are saying, Apostle, I don't know where to start. Don't worry. You are learning the laws. Remember again. You are a man of God. You are moving around with invitation cards. I'm anointed. No. The fact that you have to tell people you are there as a man of God is a sign that something is wrong. You are a worker in church. This is how you start. While you are growing, this will start happening to you. Supernaturally, in your department, they will say lead prayer one day. Are you seeing now? When you lead that prayer, then one day, the pastor will say lead opening prayer in church and he will gather all your destiny helpers in front of you that day. But when you have worked on yourself, it becomes your season of appearance. The moment you say that God will cause someone to look at you and say, ah, what is it that you do? He said, well, God is helping me. He said, I have one youth fellowship. Would you come and just say hello to them? Don't despise them. Because that day, God will make the owner of an oil and gas company to come and just decide to join his children that day. Let me show you the mysteries of the lifting power of transformation. While God was training you, he never told you you will meet an oil and gas person. Your growth keeps drawing them. Save yourself the stress of knowing how it will happen. No, that's not your assignment. How is a burden that is bigger than you? Just as you do not know how bones are formed in the womb of her who is with child, nor the way of the wind, the Bible says, so you do not know the ways of God. His ways are past finding. Leave that to his intelligence. Yours is to just trust. There are people God has brought to my life today. I never, how would I have met them? Growth. You see, when you are growing, you are not the only one growing. 
So all those who are growing like you, there is a point you will meet. The CEO that you are looking for is also growing. You just keep growing. Forget about trying, trying. You are not alone. The Holy Ghost is there helping you. One day, somewhere at the point of your growth, there will be a collision. It's no coincidence that we are meeting with your pastor today and his wife and preaching in the church here. Remember, once upon a time, this place was not here. I was asking him yesterday and said, how did you build this amazing place? And when he told me the story, I said, there it is. Egypt, they left Egypt in one day, but they carried Egypt in their mind. Egypt kept causing trouble for them. A journey of 40 days became 40 years because Egypt would not leave them. Many of you have left your village, but it's still with you. Many of you have left your pain, but it's still with you. Many of you left yesterday, but yesterday is still relieving itself in you. You came to church this morning to say enough is enough. Some of you just, you are waiting right now. Oh God, capital. Are you seeing that not every delay is demonic? God delayed your uncle from giving you that money until you hear this message. Otherwise, you will waste that money the same way it happened last year again. I know that all it takes, in fact, I know the mistake I made yesterday, I'll correct it now. And your mind is still in yesterday. I am passionate about my transformation. I am passionate about my transformation. Jesus at age 12, when his colleagues were running around, causing trouble in the city, he was there engaging in transformation. By age 30, that gentleman was already ready to take the world. Listen to me. Some of you are seated here right now. Nobody may know you. But let your mindset transit enough. And one day you will see the people you used to admire. Bow their heads and say, it's an honor to meet you. And then you will tell the person, do you know I desired seeing you? Brothers and sisters, listen to me. I know what I am telling you. The Lord, through your transformation, you give God space. To open up doors and do tremendous things in your life. One more time. Let me show you your destiny. Are you willing to pay the price? Instead of buying clothes and living a fake life. Buy the materials that transform you. Ah, I came to your house and all I see is just Gary. Take it with honor while you grow. Don't be embarrassed that you're today. You will miss it soon. Don't rush seasons. And while you grow, Lord, I know. The nations will come to bless me in the name of Jesus. Lord, I may come from a background where nothing is happening, but I trust your ways. I know I am rising. I know I came from a family where we never had a television, but Lord, I know. And you open your eyes one day and you are in the midst of blessings that will never be reversed again. Do you believe what I just shared with you? Listen to me. I give you an assignment. Focus on building your mind. More than the job you do. More than the business you do. The real place of investment is your mind. Anything outside you, don't trust it. Things are only secured when they are inside you. <laughs> I don't trust anything outside me. But what is in you? Are we blessed? You have some money right now in your pocket. You have some money right now in your account. I know you have some properties for some of you. You have some businesses that are flourishing. I agree. I respect what you've done so far. But God is shifting us to realms. Realms beyond what you have seen. Possibilities that will dumbfound you. Many of the people you are looking for today, if you will pay the price for your growth, I tell you, a law was created and creation still respects that law. When you grow, that which is equivalent to your growth must come to you. Must come to you. Must come to you. 
how many of you have thought of someone and then the person is just calling you because it's a law he didn't just think of you he didn't just call you there is more that happens in that happens in our world than the physical you have to believe this do you know why god is teaching us this so that you can defend your prosperity because we live in a nasty society that believes people are just lucky so when you come they just tell you how oh, you are lucky i'm sure they just favored you that son name is it the one that i know and you are even saying you learned any principle they just dash you money no you can make defense of the truth that you have that I, I was yes it's the grace of god but it's not by luck i can reproduce it again then you can raise others also literally lift people from ground up there is a science to abundance one of it is the law of the mind can you give me five minutes to talk on one more gentlemen thank you the lord bless you you will never go down in jesus name amen and amen thank you are we blessed pray in the spirit in one minute just to absorb what you have received that's all right praise the lord now listen the second law is called the law of value the second law is called the law of value proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16 the law of value my god somebody's life is truly changing in the name of jesus the christ of god someone's life is changing look up please proverbs 18 and verse 16 says the gift of a man makes room for him the gift of a man makes room for him and that gift like an usher can bring him before great people he has no business being among the great but his gift can make room before then there's no room for him there was no room for esther the palace already had someone sitting there but the gift of a man the law of value write this down your value is a measure of your usefulness your value is a measure of your uniqueness your value is a measure of your capacity to provide solutions your value is a measure of your usefulness your value is a measure of your uniqueness your value is a measure of your capacity to provide solutions. This is a world that operates based on a reward system. That means that if you are not providing solutions, listen carefully, there is no reward that is mandated to come towards you. If you are not providing solutions hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us
Thank you.